Hello again. Now it's time to explore the parameters of the car. So, I have a car here. As you can see, when I move my car, the wheels rotate automatically and they stick to the ground. Let's see what we have here. The first category is the car setup. We have set some of these in the blueprint when we set up the car, but some parameters are accessible here as well. First is the scale of the car relative to the actual size of the meshes you've imported. You can make your car tiny or big or just correct the scale of it. The next one is body height and we set this in the blueprint, but we have it here as well. Let me quickly open the sequencer. Every parameter with this icon is accessible and keyframeable in the sequencer. The next two are side offsets and we had these in the blueprint, but you can modify them per instance in the level to create different versions of the same car. Like wide body. Next is steering wheel rotation. This is how the steering wheel rotates with the actual steering of the wheels. If I leave it at 4 and do a 45 degree steering, the steering wheel will rotate 180 degrees and that's 45 times 4. If I set it to 10, the steering wheel will rotate so much more. So, if you have a four-wheeler bike and you have imported the steering handle as the steering wheel, you should set this ratio to 1. Let's skip the controllers for now, we will get to them at the end of this video. Trace ground sets whether the wheels should always stick to the ground or not. If I turn it off, the wheels can leave the ground. So, if you want to animate a flying car, definitely turn it off. To show the next ones, it's better to turn on the trace debug. I'll set the debug on the first one. You can see how the wheels start tracing downwards until they hit something, and then they will be located, based on the hit location. To alter the radius of this sphere, you can modify these trace corrections. By decreasing them, wheels go into the ground, and by increasing them, they will leave the ground and you can do a wheelie with the front one. Next is the trace type. We have two trace types, sphere and line. The sphere is better and is the default because it will be smoother when the wheels go on a curb. If I change it to the line, the wheel will not go up until the center of the wheel hits the curb. But you might need the line trace at times. Let me show you when. As you can see, our wheel is a disc but our trace is a sphere, and sadly, currently Unreal does not have a disc trace. So, when the car passes a big object very closely, the sphere is triggered and the wheel goes up. But the actual wheel has not even touched the obstacle, and that's when you need to switch to line tracing. You know what the debug does. Just don't select the persistent option because these shapes will not go away until you restart your level. So, as you know, this system does not need simulating because it runs on the editor tick and this is the toggle for it. If you turn this off, the car will not react to anything until you simulate. But you can turn it off for your already animated cars to save some FPS. The tick FPS is how often the editor tick runs. This only affects the editor and visuals. Because as soon as you hit play or render, the editor tick is off the cycle. The final toggle is the visibility of the car, and it will also affect the render not just the editor. The next category is the suspensions. The stiffness sets how fast the suspension reacts to shocks. The minimum is zero, and you can see how slow that suspension reacts. If I make it 9.9, .9, it will be the fastest. And if I make it 10, it will be instant. Let's experiment that with this lift platform. The next one is body leaning. When you do the steering and drifting, in real life, the body of the car leans due to inertia forces and this parameter is used to replicate that. And you can make it negative if you want. If you want to do the steering when the car is stopped, make sure you set the body leaning to zero because the leaning should not happen when the car is not moving. 
we have camber angles for the front and rear. And they can be negative too. You can keyframe the body pitch and roll. These are used to correct the wheels going into the fenders when drifting with a high body leaning. We're done with the suspension category. The next category is the driving. Let me draw a path quickly. In this list, you can see all the compatible paths and select a path to attach your car to. You can also keyframe the path selection. The path response speed sets how fast the car adjusts rotation to the path. Since unreal splines can get choppy at curves, you can use this parameter to smoothen the car's rotation. The default is 8. But if you set it to 10, the car alignment is going to be instant. And 1 is the minimum. Just make sure your car never has a transform track in the sequencer if it's animated on a path, because even an empty transform track can prevent the car from aligning correctly to the path. Let's see what this side offset does. If I have a straight path and want to dodge the traffic, instead of modifying my path like this, I can keyframe the side offset in centimeters. And in this case, you can also do the steering manually. I'll explain the manual steering in a bit. There is a detach from the path toggle and as long as it's on, the car cannot be attached to any path. You can keyframe this toggle to detach your car from the path in the middle of your sequence but beware, if you want to use it, you have to keyframe the path track as well. Whenever it's red, the car is attached and whenever it's green, it's detached. You already know what the distance traveled is. It's the main parameter to keyframe to move the car along the path. There is a whole car rotation. Because if you try to rotate your car when it's on a path, you can't. With this parameter, you can rotate the car and do various car slides or reverse movement. Have you noticed wheels don't rotate in this case? Because wheels only rotate with the movement in the forward and backward directions. Also, the whole rotation does not affect the steering. You already know the drift. And the steering. Why doesn't steering work? Ah, that's because the car is on a path and this auto steering toggle is on. So, whenever the car is on a path and this toggle is on, steering will not work and the car will steer automatically based on the path. But if you turn it off, you can steer however you want and keyframe your awesome steering. The next two are burnouts. These can have positive or negative amounts. Moving on, steering noise will add those movements to the car when the driver tries to maintain the line when drifting. And it also works when doing a rear burnout. The last two are brake locks. Pretty self-explanatory. Just keyframe them when you want the wheels to stop rotating. The next category is the read-only. First is the speed in kilometers per hour. And the second one is the real steering. So, you already know when this toggle is on, the steering will be based on the path and this steering parameter won't affect the car. In that case, you can read the real steering here. The final category is vibrations. You can add these micro movements to your car for increased realism. First of all, don't forget to set this overall vibration to 1 because I have set the default to 0, to prevent you from rendering a stationary car with vibrations by mistake. Then you can set the amount and speed of the vibrations for the wheels and the body. And this overall multiplier is for quickly increasing or decreasing all of the vibrations together. Now let's see what this user-defined time is. 
There might be times that you need to render your animation multiple times, maybe each time render a different render pass. In this case, you want the same frames each time you render, so you can composite those render passes in another software. Or maybe you want to stop your render and resume the remaining frames later. Since these vibrations are Perlin noises and they run on game time, they might produce different results each time you render. And that's why we need this user-defined time toggle. You can see when it is turned off, vibrations are continuously running on game seconds. If I turn it on, vibrations will stop. Because this parameter is our time now, and it is frozen on zero. So, I will add this time parameter to my sequencer and set the first frame to zero. If I want my vibrations exactly like when it is driven by the game time, I need to calculate the time in seconds for the last keyframe. So first I will set all my vibrations with game seconds so I can visualize them better. When I'm done, I will turn the user defined time on, set the first key to zero, and calculate the last key by dividing the frame number by my render FPS. This will result in seconds and that's what we need. In my case, the last frame is 149 and my FPS is 30, resulting in 4.9 seconds. As you can see, this parameter only needs two keyframes at the start and the end. When I play this, you can see time is going forward and vibrations are running. Let's increase the overall intensity to check if vibrations are consistent. When I go back and forth, you can see the vibrations are repeated and that's what we were after. We eliminated any randomness from the vibrations. And a fun fact, not only does this time parameter affect the vibrations, it also affects the steering noise and makes them non-random too. Now let's get to the fun part. When I click on the controllers parameter, pay attention to the outliner. You can see two controllers are spawned as children of my car. When I move my car, they move with it. I'll select this top one and move it. See how it affects the body pitch and body roll? Let me lock my details panel so you can see this. When I rotate it, it will affect the drift. If I move this yellow controller, the steering will be changed, but keep in mind it will only change the manual steering not when it's automatic. You see, instead of keyframing four parameters, I can keyframe the transform of these two controllers and these are easier, more visual, and more fun to work with. When you have these controllers on for your car, the four control parameters will not work in the sequencer, so do not add them to your sequencer and do not keyframe those parameters. Another important thing you should know is that every time you turn controllers off, these controllers will be destroyed and the connection of these actors in the sequencer will be lost. And if you turn it on again, they will spawn with another name. So, if you keyframed a lot of transforms and don't want to lose all that work, you need to fix this by reassigning the actors to the new ones. Also, if you make your car spawnable, each time you close your sequencer, the car will be destroyed and when you open the sequence again, another car will be spawned but with new controllers and different names. Just keep that in mind. That's the end of this video. This was a long one, but in my opinion, it was the most important one. So, I hope you guys have learned something from it. Thanks for watching and see you later.